Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I was thinking about the real costs of 3D printing. But more importantly, what are you doing in my house? That was obviously a joke. I'm a very good actor. What I'm actually doing is uh, actually I'm, I'm getting much closer to being able to 3D print right here in the, the basement. This is the, well, this is now partially the airbrush room and the 3D printing room. It used to be the little uh, Harry Potter airbrush room underneath the stairs here in our basement. Uh, but I've now got the Elgu Saturn set up. I've got it in uh, an enclosure. I've got a wash station. I've got a nice table, the whole deal. I drilled a hole in my house for ventilation purposes, not just for fun. I mean, it was kind of fun, but nonetheless, uh, the, all of this, as I'm getting closer and closer to actually being able to produce some miniatures down here, has made me think a lot about questions that people have had a lot online lately, stuff that I've seen discourse and, and conversations and things like that on you know Twitter or whatever. Is 3D printing really cheaper than just buying miniatures store-bought from the store and building them. And um, I got to say that I really wish that there was a straight answer. So Pedantics will say, well, obviously a $60 box of miniatures is cheaper than pretty much any resin printer, you know, although I think I did see one for a hundred bucks once, but in general, they're between two and $500, depending on how fancy you want to go. And you know, if you were just to sit down and look at it from that aspect, well, obviously, yeah, buying miniatures is way cheaper. You just bought this box of miniatures, you build it, there you go. There's a lot going on back here. And, you know, I'm obviously being a little bit more kind of over careful. That's kind of what I do with weird chemicals in the house and stuff like that. A lot of people just set stuff up in their hobby room and start cranking out miniatures. And that's great. But when you really sit down and start looking at the differences between 3D printing and just using the miniatures that you can buy in the store... Um, you know, it's kind of like buying a bike or, you know, riding the bus. Uh, you know, a bike might cost a couple hundred bucks, maybe more. It can go really, you know, crazy high if you want to. Uh, bus, you know, costs like two bucks or something like that. I don't know. So obviously the bus is cheaper. But over time, as you keep not riding the bus because you're riding your bicycle, over time, it's going to definitely become something that is cheaper. And it'll also have other hidden benefits, like probably getting into shape or whatever. Now, one thing to understand is that 3D printers are not just the cost of the printer. As I've mentioned, I've got a wash station over there. I've got a cool enclosure thing. There's the ventilation. There's all that stuff. Not only beyond that, you've also got all the weird little tools and things for scraping stuff and for doing this and doing that and rubber gloves and the whole deal. Um, not also to mention the actual material. This uses, uh, you know, liquid resin. Other types of printers use filament. You have that constant kind of consumable that you have to go through as you are printing miniatures, as opposed to where, you know, there are some tools that you need for buying miniatures and then putting them together. You need glue and clippers and little, you know, files and junk like that. But for the most part, there's going to be a little bit more expense to the 3D printing than there is to just buying some miniatures and working on them. But again, it's the long term that we have to think about. If you were interested in just playing a skirmish game that needs, I don't know, five to ten miniatures, uh, then I don't know that I would just go out and buy a 3D printer to make that happen. Kind of goes back to that whole bike versus bus sort of situation. But I can tell you that building an entire 100 to 200 to 300 figure giant army for any kind of big army game that you might be interested in playing, that can be a ton cheaper when you're using a 3D printer than when you are actually buying all of those models and putting them all together and going through all that stuff. Even if you take into the cost, the side, you know, the printer and the, the, the fluid and the little scrapey bits and all the tools and all that kind of stuff, that in comparison to say buying 300 miniatures from Games Workshop to make up your giant Sylvaneth army or whatever the deal might be, that that's a definite savings with 3D print. But it's not just the actual physical money costs of either the models that you buy from the store or the stuff that you get here, uh, you know, and, and print in your basement or your garage or your shed or whatever. There's also the time that comes into both of those. Now, sitting down and building miniatures, obviously, it takes a certain amount of time. But there's also a certain amount of time to 3D printing as well. Now, the benefit is that 
when you get done with a 3D printed miniature, you're not going to have to scrape a bunch of mold lines. You're not going to have to usually, you know, you're going to have to disconnect it from the supports potentially, but that's not necessarily as difficult. You're not going to have to usually glue too many things together. It depends on the model. So there's tooling and kind of that kind of work on both ends. But there is a lot that you have to learn about 3D printing to make it work. And it's different than just clippers and glue. There's, you know, all the different settings. There's the software. There's the temperatures you need to try to hold. There's getting everything leveled. There's a lot of things. And it's not insurmountable by any stretch of the imagination. But it is new stuff that you need to learn. 3D printing, and I've said this in the past, kind of becomes a secondary hobby if you start to do it for tabletop wargaming. But I think for me, personally, the reason that I'm kind of taking this journey and going into 3D printing and, and you know, getting a table and the stuff and the ventilation and all of the things that I'm going through, it's not because I'm trying to stick it to the man. It's not because I want to save a bunch of money on miniatures. I mean, Lord knows, like I said, there's been an upfront cost for sure. And as long as I keep doing this over time, I'll recoup some savings. But what I'm really most interested in with 3D printing is the freedom. And I don't mean I'm free from buying stuff in stores, because I still buy stuff in stores, don't get me wrong. What I mean is, when you get into 3D printing, for miniatures specifically, there are so many different things out there that you can print. And you can find so many different types of models, things that no one in their right mind would ever turn into an actual product, right? Okay, think about this. You come up with a concept for a miniature. You're at some big company, big company X. You come up with a concept for a miniature. You know how long it's going to take to get, um, you know, the the concept artist to do their part. Then how long it's going to take the 3D sculptor. It's going to be revisions. It's going to be back and forth. These people need to get paid. So you're going to be going back and forth doing all that kind of stuff. And that's a lot of work and it's a decent amount of money. Now that you finally got a finished, ready to go, this is the design. Then it has to get put into some sort of mold making process. Maybe it is uh, metal molds and, you know, because it's going to be a plastic miniature, so you need plastic injection and all that stuff. That's crazy expensive. Maybe you're just deciding, we'll use CO cast. That's ex less expensive. Well, you got to buy the machines and all that kind of stuff, but still generally a bit less expensive for production. But again, if you're doing a ton of them, then it's not going to work out so well. You want to do a smaller lot of them in instead. Let's say you just go straight resin. Well, the, the molds are cheaper, but you have to keep making them if you keep making more of these things. Same with metal. There's all these different things. Now you have a bunch of actual completed miniatures of this crazy design idea you had. Now you have to figure out how to get them into people's hands. There's marketing, there's shipping, there's warehousing, there's fulfillment. There's all of this stuff, which I'm sure that you're already bored of because you know I know I am. But on the other hand, as a Patreon sculptor who's got their own kind of particular interesting vision, you can design something, produce it, put it onto your Patreon, put it onto my mini factory. A weirdo like me can find it and say, I've never seen anything quite like this before. This is amazing. And I might be one of 30 people. I might be one of 100 people in the world that thinks that that's awesome. But now me as the consumer, I get access to it and I can crank it out down here in the basement and all of those other variables don't have to even be thought about because here's the trick. All that stuff, fulfillment and warehousing and concept artist and all that stuff. If all of that stuff at the end of the day, the number doesn't make sense, that just doesn't happen. That crazy idea that that person working at Company X had doesn't happen. They don't make it. So you don't get access to it. But now with 3D printing, you can. So I'm becoming a bigger fan of this entire concept. And I understand there is a hill to climb. Um, I've been told by many people it's not that big of a hill or it's more of a slope. You know, it depends. But the whole concept of getting this ready to go so I can start producing weird minis. And I've been collecting weird minis. I've been finding all kinds of strange stuff on my mini factory, Cult 3D, all these different places, um, searching things out. I love weird and interesting minis that fit stuff that honestly they very frequently inspire me. I find a mini, I stumble across a miniature, let's say something that I was looking for on my mini factory and I find something else instead and I go, oh my god, I could build an entire squad around three of these guys and add on some stuff. And you can even kit bash as well within the 3D stuff. You get yourself an STL and you like the head on this one and the, 
body on this one and you can swap that all around and do all that kind of stuff and that's another hill that I look forward to climbing at some point as well because I love kit bashing but if I could just do it in the computer and then just print it out and be done with it that's even more freedom so if you're interested in 3d printing maybe talk to some friends and see what they think if they're in it and that kind of stuff if you've got some points and things that I've missed and said well actually it should be this put that stuff in the comments down below I'd appreciate it and uh, if you get the chance you know click that like button click that subscribe it always does help thanks for watching